watching this video tutorial, it is a free sample from our course The Ultimate Introduction to V-Ray 4 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. This is a massive 17 hour long course, that's 1030 minutes of high quality and academic video tutorials on V-Ray. Now let's get started with this video tutorial. Okay folks, in this lesson we learn how to achieve and adjust motion blur in V-Ray. Basically, motion blur is the apparent streaking of rapidly moving objects in a still image or a sequence of images. It happens when the image being recorded changes during the recording of a single exposure, either due to rapid movement or long exposure. When a camera creates an image, that image does not represent a single instant of time. That image may represent the scene over a period of time, right? Most often this exposure time is brief enough that the image captured by the camera uh, appears to be uh, to capture an instantaneous moment. But this is not always so and a fast moving object or a longer exposure time may result in blurring artifacts which make this apparent uh, motion blur. As objects in a scene move, an image of that scene must represent an integration of all positions of those objects, as well as the camera's viewpoint, over the period of exposure determined by the shutter speed. In such an image, any object moving with respect to the camera will look blurred or smeared along the direction of relative motion. Let's quickly see what we have in the scene. If I press play, you can see we have these simple animated fan blades. For now, let's go to frame 50 and render our scene from this frame. And the physical camera 02 is the active camera in the scene. In order to enable motion blur, we need to go to the shutter section of the physical camera rollout. So here you can enable motion blur. So let's do that. The reason for motion blur is simply uh, the amount of time that the shutter of a camera is open is long enough to allow your camera's image sensor to see the movement of that object. So longer shutter speed means more apparent and stronger motion blur. Now let's take a look at a few renders with different shutter speed durations. First set the shutter speed type to fraction seconds and for the first render set the duration to one thousandth of a second. In the first render, motion blur is off and as you can see, there is no motion blur in the scene. Now, if we take a look at the render with the shutter speed of one thousandth of a second, because the shutter speed is very, very short, we didn't capture any movement or any motion blur. For the next render, let's set the duration to two hundredth of a second and now, because the shutter is open for a longer time compared to our previous render, we get a slight motion blur in the render. For the next render, let's set the shutter speed to 100th of a second. Again, a longer shutter speed gives us a more apparent motion blur. Now for the next render, the shutter speed duration was set to 50th of a second more motion blur again, then 24th of a second, again more motion blur. As you can see, longer shutter speed result in a more apparent motion blur because the shutter is open for a longer time and actually can capture the movement of the blades. In the next render, it was set to 4th of a second and finally a very long 1 second exposure. To recap, and as I'm going through the renders from uh, one thousandth of a second to a full second shutter speed, you can see a longer shutter speed means more apparent and stronger motion blur. For now, let's set the shutter speed to 24th of a second. The next parameter that we have and can affect the look of the shutter speed is offset, which specifies when the shutter opens relative to the start of each frame. The first render was done with offset set to 0, then 0.5, and finally 1. 
you can see where the shutter opens at the start, middle or end of the frame, changes the look of the motion blur. For now let's set the offset to zero and disable it. There are a few motion blur related options in the render settings, so open up the render setup window and in the V-Ray tab go to the camera rollout. First we have camera motion blur and if enable the movement of the camera as well as the objects will cause motion blur. We have geometry samples which determines the number of geometry segments used to approximate motion blur. If you have rotating objects like what we have or the movement of your object is not a simple linear movement from point A to B, you need to increase the geometry samples to get correct motion blur which in turn increases the render time because more samples of the object need to be kept in the memory. Now let's take a look at a few renders with different geometry sample values. The first render was done with geometry samples set to 2. Then it was set to 4. Now we get a bit more accurate result compared to our previous render. Then it was set to 8. And finally 16. As you can see, there is not much of a difference between 4, 8, and 16 in this specific case, but for more complex movements, you might need more geometry samples. In this case, let's set the geometry samples to 8. And we have pre-pass samples, which controls how many samples in time will be computed during Iridian's map calculations. Now, if you don't have a physical camera in the scene and you want to render from the perspective view, which is nothing that I actually recommend, always use a physical camera because it's just going to give you a, a lot more control. You can enable motion blur here in that case if you don't have a physical camera if you, or if you don't use one. In that case, duration here would control the duration of the shutter speed, uh, which is in frames here. Interval center specifies the middle of the motion blur interval with respect to the 3ds max frame. A value of 0.5 means that the middle of the motion blur interval is halfway between the frames. A value of 0 means that the middle of the interval is at the exact frame position. Interval center is basically the offset parameter in the physical camera parameters. Bias controls the bias of the motion blur effect. A value of 0 means that the light passes uniformly during the whole motion blur intervals. Positive values mean that light is concentrated towards the end of the interval, while negative values concentrate light towards the beginning. These options are really not that important and you really don't need to change them. And uh, now for the final render, let's set the shutter speed duration to 48 of a second in a physical camera. Now let's take a look at the final render. As you can see, when you have depth of field and motion blur in your render, uh, the render time is going to be very, very long. We have a beautiful depth of field and the F number for this render was set to 4 and a very nice motion blur. Also, we have the denoiser pass, which uses the mild preset. Let me just turn on color balance and make the shadows a bit bluer, maybe 0.12 and the highlights can be a bit yellower, maybe 0.1. So here is our final render with just small color correction. In this lesson, we'll learn about motion blur and I will see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this video tutorial. It was a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to V-Ray for 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. This is a massive 17 hour long course. That's 1030 minutes of high quality and academic video tutorial. See you next time, guys.